Good day, everybody. This is Andrew Devlin with Pitch Hub, and I've also got Doris Pickering with me from Silicon Valley Speaks. So, hey, guys. So this is the third uh, episode in our three-part series. The first two series, um, first two episodes that we did were about, about me, about what to say on video about me and how to engage your audience and how to get them to get interested in what you're saying. But then the second series, second um, episode was all about call to action. So how do you bring, how do you engage with your audience and then talk to, about, talk to them and finish in your video about a call to action. And so today's uh, episode is we're going to help you transition from about me to that call to action and how to do that effectively. But also as part of this series, we wanted to um, give you a kind of overview of how to be on video, how to get yourself on video, lighting, your presence, and your attire. So uh, with that being said, this is what the, the this episode's all about. So um, real quick, I, we're going to show, uh, get into some slides here. We're going to do a quick introduction into Pitch Up and Silicon Valley Speaks. Um, and then we're going to get into the actual uh, uh, content that we've uh, pr prepared for you guys. So Doris, you're you're in control today. If you would not mind sharing your screen, and we'll get into the into the PowerPoint. Just uh, by way of introduction, in, in regards to Pitch Up, we are a video platform as a service. We've been around for actually the last week was our third year anniversary, and um, it's uh, it's you know it's it's really exciting to be uh, have co-founded this with with Ben Norton, um, and. He's my other co-founder and it's really exciting because we help people get online with video and just seeing people uh, get their videos out there, kind of get through that, um, you know, hard, the hard thing of getting on video and really putting yourself out there on social media and seeing people transition, not only from, you know, seeing their business change with video marketing, but also seeing them change with the um, kind of you know, with the confidence that they've given themselves in doing videos and getting videos out there on social media. So it's really, really, that's our why. I love seeing this. And we want to do this at scale. So it's a win-win. That's really what our mission is. Um, and so we have uh, just basically, we streamlined the video production process. So shooting your video, scripting, teleprompter, all these things we've uh, incorporated within a, uh, a an online platform for uh, your services or uh, as services to provide to you. And then we also have editing services too that make your videos look super professional. So that's the, just a quick intro into Pitch Hub. And um, I'll hand it over to Doris here. She can introduce herself again. And then we're going to get into the video presence and uh, transition. Well, thanks, Andrew. So again, I am Doris Pickering and I founded Silicon Valley Speaks about nine years ago as a way to work with professionals and business owners to increase their confidence and clarity about what they say and how do they say it, and especially how to be clear and concise and compelling so you can attract new clients and customers to you. So today's episode, as Andrew mentioned, is all about your presence and transitions, especially the hardest transition, which is going from talking about yourself and your services to asking people to do something. So let's get started. So again, as I just mentioned, the transition is actually the segue as you go from each section of your presentation to the next section. Um, and the clear choice of why that's important is to you want to keep building and maintaining interest in what you're saying. And you also want to create or maintain an emotional bond with the people that are listening to you. Because if they don't have an emotional bond, then they're not that invested in staying with you or proceeding and having them do what you want them to do. So again, the most difficult one is going from the main body, which is the about you and why should they care, a part of your speech to the call to action or an offer, depending on what your statement is about. Because again, we encourage you to have multiple videos, which will need to have multiple scripts, depending on what you're wanting your audience to do. 
The reason why it's so difficult and a lot of people struggle with it is because you are often asking people to do something and especially spend money with you. And most of us have an emotional charge around money. So you can probably all agree that we all supply awesome services to our clients. We love doing what we're doing and we're good at it. We really care, we give the best possible, and our clients love us. But a lot of us still struggle with asking people for that transaction to give us money. And so how this will turn up often is your voice changes. So I'm gonna give you a couple tips on how to maintain your awesome presence and not sabotage your transition going from your main body to your ask. So one of the key differences that you will want to maintain is your upbeat emotional presence. So as you are going through your video presentation in the beginning, you want to keep that flow and that image as you're going into this last section, the call to action or the ask. One of the best ways you can do this is to, as you are videoing yourself, watch yourself and see, are you changing as you're going from each section? Does your voice change? So often it's unconscious to us and it can be unconscious to the people watching you, but you can hear it and it's subliminal. So if you are uncomfortable, asking people for money or asking people to sign up now or whatever it is that you're going to be asking them to do, your voice changes. Discomfort is an energy and that energy changes your voice, it changes your face, it changes your body language. So really pay attention. One of the best things that you can do to help yourself is know what you're going to ask. You need to be so clear and so grounded and believe in what you are asking people to do it that it makes it so much easier to ask them to do it and again does your body language shift a lot of people get really nervous you may start clenching your hands you may grab your hands you may get stiff your your throat muscles get stiff because it's literally hard to choke out the words to ask people to pay you or click here, right? It's all the same because if you're asking people to click here, the reason why you're wanting them to click there is eventually they're gonna give you money. So again, it's all the psychological in your head. What does that make you do with your voice and your body? Here's a couple of ideas about what not to say. If you think you might be interested so, oh my goodness, so how many ways is this bad? If, right, if is inviting people to ponder, oh, do I want to or do I not want to? So you don't want to invite doubt, right? So ex nay on the if. Um, if you think, right, you don't want to invite people again to think about do they want to or do they don't, not want to, right? So that's another word to avoid, might. If you think you might, right, again, you're inviting doubt. So that's not what you want to say. This one has three things that you don't want to say. If, again, if you want to learn more. So there's a problem with this inherently where, again, if is inviting doubt, you want is also inviting a, do I want to or do I not want to? Because there's a big difference between a need and a want. And your job in your video is to eliminate the want and it's a need. Oh my God, they absolutely need to do whatever you're gonna ask them to do, right? It's not a want, it's a need. And again, one of the problems with learning Learning is work. And again, it's subliminal. People don't want to work. They don't want to learn. They don't want to get educated because again, that's a heavy lift. People are busy. They're tired. They're stressed out. Your role is to make whatever you're wanting them to do easy and a no brainer.
And process is uh, another word to get out of, get away process. from. Process, right. Let me show you the 10 process steps. No, ex on all of that. Don't do it. And again, pay attention. Does your body language shift? Now, here's a couple of examples on what to say. I invite you to, because again, that's a warm conversational sharing. I'm here to support you. People love to be invited. Join me as I. The beautiful about thing about this is you're inviting people to join you. When you're joining, you're part of a community. You're part of a, a movement. Who doesn't want to be part of that? Click the link in the video and whatever is next. You're again, it's an action. Click the link. Right. Again, you, your job is to show people and lead people and tell people clearly, succinctly, concisely what to do and when to do it and when to do it now. Right. It's not let's think about this and kind of sort of have a week to think about it. No. Click the link now. And again, join my community of, you know, I invite you to join my community community of people taking action now. Again, you're just creating this excitement and this movement. Who doesn't want to be part of that, right? You're making it easy for them to feel like they, of course, want to do that. And again, all of these statements, they're action oriented. They're not thinking oriented, action oriented. And again, they're acting as if it's a no-brainer. They'd be a fool not to, right? Again, you don't want to make people think that they're a fool, but it's just a no-brainer. So easy. Click here. And you're leading them to take action, right? You're not uh, cajoling or making them feel like an idiot if they don't want to, even though you kind of are. But again, you see there's a different energy charge to making people feel like an idiot if they don't do it versus it's a no brainer if they do. It's kind of the same thing, but there's a different charge of energy. So again, pay attention to your words because words matter. And again, you're inviting people to do things with you. Um, oh, so the next portion that we're gonna go into is one of my favorites, which is all about your video presence. So what is it? Let me tell you. We're going to be talking about lighting, camera positioning, and attire. So those are the big three main attributes of video presence that will make or break your video. So let's start with lighting. So I'm going to be showing you some examples. And of course, you all know what is wrong with this person. He's sitting in a room that's too dark. He's sitting in front of a window that's too bright. So he looks like a shadow. Now, the other thing that's interesting is as your eyes go back, there's also a glare on the other. It looks like a glass door. So there's two sources of really bright light. And again, you can't really see this person. And I cannot emphasize enough how important getting your lighting is. And I'm sure you've heard it said a million times. And the reason why you've heard it said this often is because it matters. So again, I coach people a lot and it really is interesting to me how many times I've coached certain individuals and they will not fix this. And so for me, if you want to be seen as a credible professional, as the top person in your game, you have got to pay attention to this and you've got to fix it. So again, you want to show up the best self in your videos. And if you can't get these three things right, why are you doing it? Because if you're not showing up as the best in class, as a professional, then really, change these and then you will show up as the best in class. Here's another fun one. So again, a lot of us wear glasses. So the reason why I'm showing this is because a lot of your glasses have this glare and this is a really perfect picture to show the glare on your glasses. Now, if you're facing a window 
you will have glare on your glasses. But the other source of glare is our computer screens. So one of the things that you can do is get one of those screen savers that you can put over your, your uh, computer. That will eliminate a lot of this glare. But again, I can't emphasize enough how distracting it is when you're facing a source of light wearing glasses that it's every time you move your head, you, it's like high beams, right? So if you can do it without glasses, shoot your video without glasses. If you are truly, truly in need of glasses, consider wearing contacts or figure something out where you can minimize facing a light source so it's not this constant shifting in your glasses. That is truly distracting. So see what you can do about that to minimize it if you're wearing glasses. Camera positioning. This is always fun to me. And again, get it right because nothing will shoot your credibility faster than not doing this one thing correct. And that is positioning your camera. This guy is way too close to his camera, way, way too close. So you want to take up about a third of the camera. You want to be right in the middle and you want your eyes to be even with your camera lens. So this takes uh, figuring it out. I have a surface mounted camera on top of my monitor. It took a while to figure out how to get it right. If you have a laptop, again, you'll probably need a lot of books. Reams of paper are perfect. So again, this is the thing that will happen if you have a laptop and you're setting it on your desk and you're just uh, positioning it. The other guy was too close. This person is too far down on the camera. So again, if you're videoing it, guess what we don't need to see? We don't need to see your ceiling. We need to see you, right? So again, this person, if she puts her laptop up on books or reams of paper and makes her camera lid go down a bit, it will make it look so much better. So again, a rule of thumb, if we can see your ceiling, your camera position is not right. And here's another thing that I see all the time is people have their camera down too low and they're standing over it. So again, what this unconsciously makes you feel like is this person is towering above you and nobody likes that feeling. We don't react to that well. The other thing that it does is it makes your audience unconsciously do this because we are unconsciously having to hunch our shoulders and turn our head back because we have to look up at you. So again, this is wrong from a lot of different things. It's forcing the people that you're talking to to look up to you. So again, as a positioning physical body language thing, it's wrong. But as a psychological thing, it's wrong because you don't want to be coming from the unconscious positioning of looking down on your audience. Doris, if I may. Yes. The, um, the other thing, too, is that, uh, you know, I'm positioned perfectly. Uh, I think my lighting could probably be a bit better. It's a different. Um, we've got some. Um, it's, it's, it's a lot of rain today, so it's pretty mm -hmm. dark outside. And so I use a lot of natural light in my mm -hmm. studio. Um, but I'm positioned correctly. Yeah, I, I see this a lot. This yeah. kind of, you know, Alfred Hitchcock was really good at this. <laughs> you know? Yeah. He, you know, if you ever see in, in, and you're talking down to people. Right. People don't like to be talked down to. You want right. to kind of stay on the same level. Yeah. Um, and so that would be one thing. The other thing, too, is that people feel more comfortable if they can see your hands. <laughs> right. And so always try to get into that position of being able to show your hands and it gives you the capability to um, be a little bit more fluid in your speaking if you can see right. your hands also. So uh, I, I think that's another couple of things. Very good point. Right. And, and again, it, it takes fiddling with, you know, like for me, when I got my external camera, um, I, I was like this, you know, because I was down lower. So I jerry-rigged my camera for a while. I'd rolled up papers and stuffed it under and duct taped it to get the position just right. Um, and then I realized, you know, 
all I need to do is raise my chair, but I'm short. So when I raised my chair, my feet weren't on the ground. Well, that's untenable because then I'm, I'm fidgeting all the time. So then I got a, a foot rest. So now I have a foot rest. My chair is higher. I, I could stop jerry rigging my camera. But again, it took a while. But you need to put in the time to get your camera angle right. Or again, this psychological people will feel like you're looking down on them and you don't want that. So yeah, just, you got to take the time though. And that's one of the things I think people, it, you know, doing videos is uncomfortable, especially in the beginning. So be to, to get rid of their discomfort, it's just like, I just, I'm just going to do it and wing it. That's awesome to do the first couple of times, but that's how you learn what to do correct right the first couple of times just do it watch your video and then that's when you see do you need to change your lighting do you need to change how your camera is and then do it right don't be one of those people who just don't do it as in that what we say in nike so i wanted to show this picture because i see this all the time as well um, and again, if you're shooting a video, you may or may not be doing this, but resist the urge to walk or move your camera when you're shooting a video. Uh, because when you're moving your camera, or let's just say you have a, your cell phone or a tablet and you're walking, you know, it's jerking. And we're also seeing the movement, the background go by. It literally makes people car sick. So you need to be stationary. So again, figure out where that is, make it stationary. Don't be moving your camera and, and get the lighting right and the positioning right. But I've seen this in a lot of videos too, where people are, are moving. So resist the urge. And again, if you're, do, if you're a lot of people, their whole persona is, being on the spot, on the fly, impromptu, let's just get it done now. And I see a lot of people doing these videos in their car. Again, you know, if that's what your whole branding is, then that's what your branding is. For me, I am not a fan of that. So again, what is your branding? You got to stick to your branding. But if you want to be perceived as a top notch professional, then that's not that look. So you're putting the time, you're putting the time into a video to communicate something to somebody else for a specific reason. So you're putting the time into it. It's just not like a, oh, in the car, I'm going to get this thing across to you yeah. and expect something great in return to it. It's like putting the time into right. your message and making it look super professional will get you the best result rather than like, oh, this kind of like a drop in the ocean to see if right yeah you're just winging it because oh yeah why not it's just like no 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 you get with people like andrew to do a, a professional job and it doesn't have to be hard he makes it quick and easy so you know put in the time and and do it it will pay dividends believe me so now attire again is so critical in how you appear on a video so again this is something you need to put some thought into so for women, what message do you want to convey? Uh, I work with a lot of people, a lot of women who have this unconscious habit of playing with their hair. So they'll play with their hair or they'll shake their hair. For those women, if that's you, again, you will know that's you if you watch your videos. Um, if that's you, you know, put your hair up in a, in a clip. You may want to put it up in a bun if that doesn't make you look too severe. Because a lot of women, when they put their hair back or up on a bit on their head, then you look really severe. So you don't want to look severe because you just don't want to do that. You always want to look inviting and professional. But again, it's like, what do you do and how to counterman that to make you the best you, right? So I chose this particular uh, po photo because she's wearing green. And I actually like green. I'm using a green screen. So Andrew, I think you're gonna do your magic so people can see what I'm gonna be doing here. So again, I had to learn a couple of times, if I have a green screen, 
you can't wear a green blouse or a green shirt or a green suit jacket because it makes you look disappear because you're blending into your green screen. Now, this can be kind of fun if you're on a family video call and you're playing hide and seek with somebody. But again, if you're on your professional video, don't wear green because you will disappear. Um, if you have uh, green sections to your blouse, then again, those little sections will disappear and you'll look like Casper the ghost with little holes in you. So pay attention to the color that you're wearing. The other example I have here um, is a holiday blouse, which we all like to do. And again, if you're shooting videos in the holidays or seasonal, you know, a lot of our stuff has glitter in it or they're very shimmery. Um, so going down to the attire here, shimmery. So again, as I'm moving, you know, shimmery works in person. It does not work on video. So again, put some thought into what you're wearing. Now, for me, I wear a lot of uh, gold, yellow, orange colors. Um, I have a lot of purple. I have a lot of blue. So those are really good colors, solid colors um, that don't really conflict with your background. Now, the other thing I wanted to say about a, a background is um, do invest in a green screen if you're going to be shooting a lot of video, because again, you want to make it look professional. If you're going to use a, a Zoom background or, a, you know, other platforms backgrounds, you need to have a green screen because if you don't, you'll be floating around. One of my friends calls it the LSD effect, right? And that is not a professional look. Um, the other thing I want to say about having a background is, again, if you are uh, shooting a video and you are in a position where you are seeking clients or you're asking for money or the call to action, be mindful of the background. If, if you're doing that, I recommend having a business office setting background. I don't recommend having the field of beautiful flowers background or the Golden Gate Bridge background or, you know, you're in the background on a fishing trip. Those are fine if they're casual settings. Typically with these videos that you're going to be working with Andrew and Pitch Hub, those are business ones. So please have a business background. Again, if you have a background, get a green screen. If Just you, uh, another thing on that, Doris. Um, yeah. When shooting videos, and I learned this early uh, in Pitch Hub, if you ever watch all my videos for the most part, I'm always wearing my Pitch Hub shirt. Mm -hmm. and I that's specifically for a reason that I might miss it's a, a piece of the video that I have to redo. And so if you have a corporate shirt on all the time, you can basically go, you know, get, get dressed and go back to your studio and put back on your shirt. And if you have a couple of them, it doesn't matter. You know, you obviously can find the clean one, but that is a great hack as far as being able to have, you know, you edit it or have other people edit back in pieces right. or we do pieces of your video in order to get it back out there. So remember the attire that you're using. And if you yes. just need your old corporate shirts, that's a great way to um, stay consistent and then redo videos and it makes it look like you did it all in one take. Right. Very good point. Yeah. Cause you know, paying attention to what you wore. So, you know, if people uh, see you wearing something different, can work, you know, most of the time. But again, yeah, Andrew makes a really good point. If you're going to be splicing things together and making it evergreen, if you will, so it's not dated and, and like, say it's Valentine's Day, for example, and I say the words, I'm wearing pink for Valentine's Day, but you're going to be showing your video in June, then that may be something that you want to not do. Right. So, you know, try not to wear holiday themed clothing or, you know, yeah. Let's say good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening. Any of those things in an evergreen video, stay away from. Right. Uh, I, I actually started this uh, video and said, good day, everyone. You know, and it was just like, good day. Good day means any time of the day. Right. So um, always right. kind of keep it, try to keep everything generic and don't time yourself. 
um, right. on your video. It's the same right. thing. But, but on the other hand, you know, you maybe be, if you're a prolific video maker, and that is a goal that we should all do, then consider doing that. Because again, you can always have continuous new video. But if you're not going to do that, to Andrew's point, make it evergreen, right? But because it can be fun to change up your videos and, and make them more related to the day or the season or whatever. But again, you know, th those then have to come down. So they're not being out of season and out of time. So again, you have to come up with a strategy of what is your intention around these videos. All right, so with that, we have time for a Q&A or whatever Andrew wants to do next. So guys, this is the, the conclusion of the episode um, on transitions and also attire and video presence. If you have any questions, please let us know. And also, if you have any videos that you've done and you're not sure if they're good, if the lighting's good or positioning, or if you have any questions for us, just email me at info at pitchup.com. Send me a link to your video. If it's on YouTube, it doesn't matter. Just send me the link to that video. Send, do a screenshot of it. Anything like that, Doris and I would be happy to look at your videos and give you feedback on them. So any yeah. questions you have from this episode, please let us know. You can just email us at info at pitchhub.com. And so right. um, that I will remove this, put myself right. and Doris back in here. So perfect. And remember, it's not if you kind of sort of maybe want to think about getting our feedback, get our feedback. We're happy to do it. Oh, did I, was I, was I not, uh, I kind of, I was, if no, 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 I, I was just wanting to reemphasize the, the point and, and it may not, you know, I, I just thought of that as, as you were talking, you did a, you, yeah, you, you weren't uh, that way. Yeah. Just <laughs> it's interesting. I mean, and I'll keep this on for the edit because it's things that you need to start thinking about all the right. time when you're, right. cause if you're on a zoom, and you do get asked to be in a podcast. There's so many things now that you're going to be asked to do on video that it's just not that video that you're doing shooting for a professional about your services you offer and the call to actions and stuff. You're doing call to actions all the time now as a professional, being asked right. to do things on video. So thank you, Doris. Thank you, everyone, for listening and watching. Let us know if you have any questions and have a great one. Oh, if you have any other ideas of videos that we should be doing um, and helping you with, we'd be happy to do that. So thanks again, Doris. Bye.